Hi everyone, welcome to Rick's 1 through 5 scale models. My name is Rick. Today I'm going to be looking at using oil paint in a tube versus oil paint in a bottle uh, to do weathering. Now there are some advantages to this mainly being lifespan of the tube and the cost. It's substantially cheaper and it lasts a lot longer than your standard bottle paint in oil uh, enamel. Um, so let's take a look at all that. So when it comes to doing weathering, I prefer to use enamels. Um, I find it to be a lot more uh, useful and uh, versatile versus using the acrylic processes. I do do all of my main painting in acrylics um, and then I take from there and I will use a sealer such as this Tamiya product to seal the uh, acrylic paint and get it all done. And then I like to take enamels to from there do all the weathering I find it like I said it's a lot uh, more user-friendly um, what I did start recently using is the tube style paints um, I find that to be more versatile and a lot more cost-effective now what I'm showing you here is this product um, and I'm not recommending any product specifically it's merely the concept of this tube versus a bottle that's mixed up and diluted already so now the basic concept here is you have an oil product that has a dye in it um, these are the different colors this one comes with now I bought this for ten dollars United States um, versus when you buy a regular one color um, of something it's going to run you around you know two to four dollars US so when you start adding up all these colors you know it gets real expensive the advantage to using these are you put a little bit on a palette such as this piece of uh, styrene I use here to put the paint on and you can take like your black and your white and mix it in and create grays and uh, change the shades so it's a matter of mixing these on the palette to get the color you want second of all the shelf life of these is a lot longer than your standard bottle and when it comes to weathering you're not going to be using a lot of paint it um, I've had some paints for you know several years and I've barely even touched it because you're only using minute amounts doing your weathering but it goes a long ways um, now these are a linseed oil based oil paint um, and I'm using this uh, testers product enamel thinner now like I said I'm not recommending brand specifically but the enamel thinner is what I'm looking at and it works fine with this it, it dilutes fine it mixes fine with these I can use them uh, right out of the tube and then use the blending process I'm going to demonstrate shortly I can also uh, dilute them down to a wash uh, it works out fantastic um, and then from there when I follow up with a flat clear to finish it off any glossiness totally goes away and it looks amazing so um, that uh, like I said it works out really well um, what you will need is several types of brushes I'm going to kind of show you those uh, something to put the paint on like this uh, uses the palette you're going to need some kind of a mixing tray or a small cup to put your paints in to dilute them down to create more of a wash um, you will need clean and very important there clean thinner don't use the same thinner you use to wash your brushes because it's dirty and it'll change your color pigmentations you want clean um, you're also going to need some kind of a way to get the thinner out uh, I use a pipette works great and then you're going to need yourself a nice rag um, so let's get started So now the application system you're going to use uh, depends on your style, but you're going to need some basic items. Um, you're going to need a couple different size brushes, um, and then more importantly, the tip, you're going to have to have some different um, types of bristles. Uh, for example, this one is wide, they're fairly soft, this one's a little narrower, and it's got a little roll to the front, but it's also soft along with this one and I use these for the blending process um, which I'm going to demonstrate but depending on the the size area you're doing you're going to want a different type now these two have a stiffer brush 
kind of more of a wiry and that you're going to use for other types of processes such as if a vehicle is driving down a, uh, a road with lots of uh, brush along the sides well as the brush rubs against the side of the vehicle it's going to smear uh, dust and dirt and mud in a way and you're going to want a more of a bristly brush to create that effect. Uh, when you're doing your pin washes and different other detailed parts you're going to need a smaller tip brush for the delicate little points of uh, doing those type of process. And then for some of the larger types of areas you're going to want a wider one but once again this is a fairly soft brush. Uh, it works out real well. Now the biggest thing here is to keep your brushes in good shape. Um, you know, they're a little dirty down here, but you want to make sure your bristles are kept in uh, real good order because the, the quality of the work is the, the equipment you use. Okay, so let's talk about making washes. Now, I just have some basic colors here. You've got a uh, crimson, a scarlet, so a, kind of a dark red, a regular red, you've got titanium white, which is white, uh, yellow okra, uh, which is kind of a gold color. Uh, you've got your burnt umber, which is a darker brown, and then ivory black, which just looks like your standard black. So initially, let's just take a little bit of the black, and then what I do is I'll just kind of put a little bit inside here. Uh, when the tube's brand new, you get a little bit of the oil comes out. And I just put a little bit in there and then I'm going to take my clean enamel thinner and then just put some in like that and then from there I'm just going to take and mix that up real good and then it, it breaks down and then gets a nice dilute And then there's your black wash. Uh, now that works out really good. You'll just take your brush, whatever you're using, and then you can just kind of, sometimes, like I said, to make sure you break it down. But there's, you can kind of go around and do your colors. Depending on um, what you're doing, you get an idea take a little bit of the paint off the brush, unload it a little bit. You kind of see how it works out really nice. It's a nice wash. You can take your, you know, the brown, do the same thing. But if you want, you can take a little bit of the red and mix it. Initially when you mix it up, you'll see how the colors just kind of change. Kind of a Bob Ross moment on all this stuff. And it kind of gets a little bit of that color tint to it. Then when you take the enamel thinner here to create a kind of a rust wash. Kind of mix that up. I'll create that shade. Now if you can change the shade on this fairly easy for example adding a little bit of black to it we'll darken it down you see how the color changed so especially when you're doing rusts or different things like that, uh, fairly quickly you can take your colors and modify them. Now that's kind of a thick wash. You may want to dilute that down a little bit more. And if you get something that's darker than you want, all you need to do is thin it down like that. Or you can put your enamel on this side take a little bit of the paint, mix it in, and create a real thin wash fairly easily to just highlight lightly. So that works out really well. 
then obviously if you're doing like a sand you want to put just a little bit of brown I use some gold make a mess and then a little bit of white and from there I kind of mix them initially see how it kind of blends down creates more of a kind of a mustardy color the gold will definitely give you that now you have for doing your uh, weathering you've got that color and then to do the wash like the other ones just add your enamel thinner mix it up nicely and there's your wash I put quite a bit of paint in there um, just for the video but it, it doesn't take much paint at all I mean really you just put just a little bit of paint in and then with the wash it, it thins it out nicely so that's just some basic ideas and colors combinations it's a matter of playing with it what's nice about these are when they dry they dry the same color so they don't change color when they cure uh, which I like about them so from here let's go on to the actual application process So initially I'm going to be using the uh, kind of a mustardy tan wash to create the effect of dust buildup around these bolts. So what I've done is I've got the uh, brush lightly uh, loaded with paint and I'm just going to lightly kind of touch like this. Now the idea here is to just create the uh, highlights you'll see that develop there such as that <clears throat> now this is the same process using a regular oil based paints to do the uh, these little details And then it's just a matter of mixing the paint to the shade you're looking for to create that effect. And this is just that process we're all familiar with of just slowly going around and highlighting different details and effects of the model. and that's that <clears throat> now what I like to do is I take the wider brush and I put the clean enamel on it and then what I'm going to do is lightly unload a lot of that and then I'm going to come back around and use it to kind of clean up these spots a little bit and kind of spread it a little more naturally and then also just like I said cleaning up the uh, excess that so it does, doesn't look unrealistic now we'll give that a little bit of time to dry out and then we'll see what the results look like okay so now I'm taking the paint straight out of the tube and I'm going to lightly apply spots here and there what I'm going to be doing in this part is taking this and blending it and pulling it down to create the uh, weathered look and the streaking effect so I'm going to be using the goldish color white white's an important one for streaking because it gives you that oxidation and kind of an effect now I'm not using a lot of paint as you can see these are small dots 
and then I'm going to use a little bit of dark brown here and there. Now, initially I'm going to take the kind of a stiffer brush and I'm going to kind of pull it like this. Then <clears throat> from there I'm going to take clean enamel thinner and I'm going to blend this downward. And like I said, the key here is that it's clean. Uh, so what you're going to have to have is a clean rag next to it. And as you go through this process, that you can lightly clean it off. Now, I'm just going to take and start pulling the paint. What happens is, as the enamel starts to get softened up by the thinner, it'll pull and create the streaking effect. It'll also fills in a lot of the holes and gaps. And as you can see, that's kind of the look. Now I'm just lightly pulling it, making sure it's going downward like water would. And working my way. What also happens is as you load up the brush, you can use it in other areas that you haven't applied paint. The biggest thing that I would say here is don't overload the brush with paint. A lot of people put too much paint on and then spend a lot of time unloading it versus loading it up. Now you can let that dry a little bit, see if you like it. The neat thing about the enamel is after it's dried a little while, if you're not happy with an area, you can dampen up your brush, come back, and the enamel paint will actually dissolve a little bit and uh, in essence reactivate it and then you can pull it down a little bit more and clean it up. Now the other thing I talked about is taking the stiff brush and creating the brush look from driving down. Now what you want to do there is you're going to just take your brush and pull it down the vehicle side to create the effect of branches scraping the side and you can kind of see there how you'll get a little bit of the pull lines and everything else. Now we'll let that dry a little bit and see what the results look like. Okay, so now it's cured. You kind of get an idea of what that looks like. Uh, the overall effect works out really nice. And zoom out here a little bit and get an idea. You can see your uh, the, the streaking sideways, also a little bit of the lines that you get downward. The next thing after you've got the look the way you want it and finished it up, you're then going to follow up with a clear coat to seal it all up and I recommend using an acrylic in case you want to come back and do anything else. Uh, but do the flat clear coat and then you'll uh, see what the results look like next. So this Puma I completed and I've done the flat clear coat on it to uh, seal everything up. You kind of get an idea here of the uh, effect we're looking for. You can see your uh, white streaks, the, the water build up, a little bit of the stripes sideways uh, but not real predominant. How it highlights all the bolts and things and it dulls everything down, makes it look a lot dustier and dirty. <clears throat> now all I've done on this model is done the enamel coat. I haven't done any of the other things yet to it. Even looking at how the tracks come out when you do it, it, it really makes a nice effect. From here you can follow up with some of your uh, uh, 
uh, powders, products to uh, create more of a dusty look or you can use an airbrush to uh, hit it on the sides, lower areas to create more of a dusty, dirty look. <clears throat> but you definitely uh, get a real nice finish. Um, I'm really, really pleased with this. Uh, I can't emphasize enough, um, use it sparingly, go light, build upward instead of trying to put too much paint on. Um, I've seen a lot of videos of people who just they pour big gobs of paint on and then they're spending forever trying to clean it off. Uh, the other thing to remember is when you paint your acrylic clear coat on, make sure that it has dried for at least 24 hours. I can't s tell you how important that is. What will happen is if you brush it, um, even though the enamel thinner isn't supposed to uh, affect it, it will create these little white spots and little bumps that can actually cause it to start to deteriorate and uh, it'll affect your final product. Now it's not really visible to the naked eye, but if you do close up pictures, it'll be really obvious. Uh, but once again, um, this is just using your enamel uh, oil or um, your oil based paints um, to uh, do your weathering. Uh, very cost effective. You can get some great results. Uh, do a little bit of mixing and matching of the colors to blend them to create a more of a natural look. Um, gives real nice results. Uh, pretty much anything from doing your uh, pull down paint style to your uh, different washes, uh, little detail spots here and there, uh, everything else. Less is best. Turns out real nice. So that's my results. That's my re, uh, little tutorial. Comment or questions always welcome. Please hit me on uh, Facebook. Email me. Uh, make comments in the bottom. Let me know what you think. Uh, any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, follow me on Facebook. You can uh, like, subscribe, please share. Uh, don't forget to hit the bell so uh, you get notified of future videos. Um, Anyway, more videos coming out soon. Everybody take care. Happy modeling and talk to you on the next one. Bye-bye.